Hey folks, today I want to show off the new Spark project template that uh, is a part of Spark 0.8.1. It is the API template. So the API template comes with the JWT authentication and Swagger already set up for you, as well as a lot of the routes you would see in the Spark Blazor project, except as API endpoints instead. So let's get started. Uh, if you haven't updated to the most recent Spark version, you can run the Spark update command, and this will update your Spark project templates, including the new API template. So if you want to use the new API template, you need to run the Spark update command, and I recommend running the Spark update command regularly just so you get all of the great changes we're making constantly. So as usual with the Spark project, we'll run the Spark new and then my API app, so the name of your project. And then for an API project, we need to specify the dash T parameter followed by API. All right, we'll CD into our root folder and then run the spark open command to open it in Visual Studio. All right, so if you've created a Spark project before, uh, most of this should look familiar. We have our env file where we set up our database connections and other you know, configurations that Spark takes into account. We have our applications folder where the majority of our backend resides. And then obviously we don't have a pages folder because there are no pages, it's an API. Uh, within the application, we have our controllers folder this is where our API endpoints reside. And uh, we have a couple example routes, like the home one, just for testing purposes. And then we have like a user dashboard route or endpoint uh, that is authorized as well. So, you know, if you want to test your authorization, you can do that here. We also have an auth controller with login and register routes, and then a profiles controller. And this has like a, the logged in user information route um, and then as, as well as a update route for updating user info. Um, that's, that's pretty much it. Everything else is the same as a normal like Spark Blazor project. So let's go ahead and run this thing. The first thing we need to do is make our migrations. So we'll do that real quick and this will create our user tables in our database. Apply the migrations. Now we are ready to run the app. While that's booting up, I'll go ahead and connect to our SQLite database. And as you can see here, our tables have been uh, migrated and created okay and our API is launched and it just automatically pulls up the swagger page you can see all our endpoints here uh, just for testing purposes this dashboard route is protected so if I execute it I'll get a 401 not authorized so let's go ahead and change that we'll create a user which I will name myself give it a password All right, user registered. So if I come to my database, I should see my user with my encrypted password here. So now we'll go come to our login route and we will pass those credentials. And this will give us a JWT token. Now, if you haven't used Swagger before, there is this little authorize button up here and you can pass in your JWT token, click authorize, and now Swagger will automatically include that token on every request. So if it's a protected route like the dashboard, we'll go ahead and execute it now. Swagger will send that JWT token for us and we get a 200 response instead of a 401 response. Uh, we can do the same thing with the profile route. 
go ahead and execute that and we will get our user information back based on the JWT token that was sent to the server. So obviously a li live app, you're not gonna be using Swagger's more for testing purposes and documentation purposes. But uh, you know if you're using this API project template and maybe you're pairing it with the JavaScript front end framework, uh, it's you know you will be this authorized button you're the one going to be calling the login getting that jwt token and then storing that maybe in local storage and having your front end js app sending that to the server when you're calling these various endpoints and endpoints you create yourself so yeah i hope a lot of you find this useful uh, for your next project whatever that may be thanks for watching bye